The relationship between Apple and Intel was fun while it lasted and I've got to experience having an Intel MacBook Pro which up to today is still my daily driver as a computer for everything, all my editing, all my work projects, all my personal projects and everything in between those. But are they still really worth it in 2023? Yes it is. Yes, it is. Ever since M1 was first introduced in November 2020, everybody's been going towards the M1 and now M2 chipsets on their MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, Mac Studios, iMacs, and potentially Mac Pros in the upcoming future. Intel MacBooks have been left behind, obviously for the right reasons, just because they were getting slower, and obviously Apple building their own chipset was a lot faster within the Apple ecosystem. But I still have my 2018 MacBook Pro 13 inch, and Actually, I made a review video on this laptop as one of my first review videos on this channel. And I wanted to review it again and go over it and show you whether or not it's still worth it today in 2023 or if you just go for a MacBook Air M2 chip. So let's quickly go over the specs of this laptop. This MacBook has an Intel Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of SSD. Also contains two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C and third generation butterfly keyboard. It still performs really well today, obviously with some drawbacks and setbacks that come from aging technology, but nothing to the point that it makes me fear that it's gonna break down at some point in the near future. Hopefully it doesn't, because I don't have money to replace it. And it doesn't give me the sense of that it's slowing down. Yes, it is slower than when it was when I first got it, but I've bought certain gadgets and a storage to make sure I keep it fast for the things that I needed to be fast for. So I start with the things that I've seen deteriorate and kind of get a little bit worse with time with this laptop. One is the battery life. That's just something that happens with every technology. Battery life has not been as great as it was when I first got it. It never had an amazing battery life, but it's definitely deteriorated. The amount of work that I do at the moment in terms of outside without a charger is not as much as it used to be. And battery life is still reasonable. I still get about four to five hours of screen on time just being on it all the time, especially if I'm mostly writing scripts or kind of doing research and reading that it doesn't need too much power when it comes to those things. Obviously, if I'm watching videos, I'm watching Netflix on the go, or anything like that, when I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos, then battery life is gonna take a hit, and it's gonna be kind of on the lower four hour to three hour. Next is the actual speed of processing times, how fast it opens up certain apps, how fast it is when I'm editing. Day-to-day -day stuff, I use Google Chrome as my main browser, it's fine fast enough to use everything as long as I have a good internet connection and never have any issues with it. Uh, it never kind of lags. It does it very rarely to the point that it doesn't become annoying and it just kind of runs fine. It becomes a problem when it comes to Final Cut Pro when I'm editing. Since I started my YouTube journey, obviously I've edited a lot more. So it means that I've put my MacBook Pro through its spaces a little bit more. And this computer, it's known for getting loud, especially on Final Cut Pro, when it's rendering a video edit. And that is something that at first I didn't notice, but since I've started doing more video editing over the past couple of years, I've noticed it more and more to the point that it does become annoying if I'm not editing with my headphone. And regardless of heat dissipation and good airflow that I might have on my setup, it still throttles a lot, so you can hear it quite loudly. Again, if I'm not using headphones to edit, uh, it does become annoying to the point that I have to just put my headphones to avoid listening to my laptop sound like a jet about to take off. So that is one thing that I believe this laptop had as a drawback when it first launched, but I feel like as it gets older and older, I definitely can hear it more and more. And it's starting to become a little bit to the point that you can hear it with certain activities that in the past, weren't used to. And one of the things I really don't like about this laptop is the keyboard and the touch bar. Let's start with the touch bar, because at first, when I first got it, I was excited. I'm like, I'm gonna use this touch bar for everything. It's gonna become a productivity task bar animal that's just gonna be amazing. And probably a month or two months into it, I stopped using it and actually stopped caring about it. Never used it for anything else other than 
raising the brightness on the screen and raising the volume on my laptop. That's about it. The only good thing that came out of that was the fingerprint reader, which I still use up to this day. The touch bar was one of the things that it does look cool. It did look great, but it quickly became very useless for me. I never used it. I still don't use it anymore. Uh, and it does have a bit of an issue. I have a bit of a software issue with it. it came maybe a year into owning this laptop that when I extend it to look at the whole function row, it just disappears completely, which again, if you had this issue before, let me know in the comments below how you managed to fix it. Again, I don't care, I don't wanna fix it anymore because I will never use it. But that's something that it happened after a year of owning the laptop. I don't know if it's a software issue, if it's a hardware issue, but I think it is more like a software issue. But yeah, this, the touch bar was, I'm glad they got rid of it because when I get a new MacBook Pro, uh, either the 14 or the 16 inch, I'm glad that they've gone back to regular function keys. I'm glad they got rid of the of the touch bar because yeah, I don't really like it. And the keyboard, this MacBook has third generation butterfly keys. It has very, very little travel. It's very minimal. The keys don't pop up as much as maybe other laptops or other keyboards. And that is a little bit annoying because sometimes you cannot really feel the travel on the keys. It gets to the point that sometimes you mistype, sometimes you miss a letter because you feel like you hit it, but you actually didn't. And sometimes I've had some issues with certain letters over the last couple of years that some letters you either have to press them right in the middle. So you cannot just kind of hit them on the sign because then you won't press or you won't just kind of like connect to it and it won't show on the screen. So that's something that I really annoying. Again, it's not the worst. I just would like a better keyboard, which is why 99% of the time I have a dot on my monitor and then I have my, obviously, my Logitech MX Key Mini, which are absolutely amazing. Enough about the bad things about this laptop and let's go into the things that I actually love and like about this laptop. The speakers, speakers are absolutely amazing. They get really loud. They don't get distorted at max volume and they do provide some really great sounds in every scenario, whether it's listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, watching a movie or listening to music. They just sound really nice. Obviously the screen is absolutely beautiful. It produces some really nice, lovely colors like we know from Apple. It has an LED screen with an aspect ratio of 2560 by 1600. It has 227 pixels per inch and it can get up to 500 nits of peak brightness, which I think is bright enough to do work outside, maybe not on direct sunlight, but definitely outside, maybe like an overcast day. I probably will stay away from those. It's not ideal. You can get away with it and you can definitely use it, but you cannot really see very well in direct sunlight. So I will stay away from those scenarios. And obviously the trackpad is absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna bore you with it, but this laptop was known at the time for its amazing trackpads. Obviously Apple's still known for their amazing trackpads. They're very responsive and very, very fast with very little latency. But apart from this MacBook, slightly worse battery life, slightly hotter, at times and slightly louder at times, this device has still been a king for me. For the uses that I get out of it have been absolutely amazing. And for the time that I've been using it, again, I've been using it for just over four years now, almost five now, it has not let me down. It hasn't crashed on me. I haven't had any software issues with bugs and I haven't had any issues with the new softwares that some people have been complaining about with in terms of crashing and all that stuff. And I do think this device is still worth it today in 2023. If you can find it at a good price, probably between four to 600 pounds, I think in a very good condition, I would highly recommend you getting it so you can save yourself some extra money, especially again, if you're not using it for any intense task like heavy editing on Final Cut Pro, or maybe on Photoshop or doing some type of animation. I would definitely recommend it as a device with a slightly better processor from any computer in that year of 2018. And if you have this device and it's getting a little too slow and you don't know why, one of the things that I did buy was an external SSD drive. I use this every day for video editing and it has helped me a ton to save my laptop from slowing down too much and keeping my editing flow and workflow a lot faster than it was when I first started editing. This one specifically is a Samsung T7. You can get them for about 100 to 200 pounds. Obviously they're not cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than buying a new MacBook Pro 
which this is keeping me away from buying the new MacBook Pro 14 inch. If you can find it at a good price, probably anything under 600 pounds, it'll be a good value for this computer right now. Anything over 600 pounds, you might as well just save an extra few hundred pounds or dollars so you can get yourself a MacBook Air, especially now that the M2 just came out, you can get it for under 1100 pounds or dollars. I haven't had any experience with the M1 or M2 chips, but by the looks of reviews and all the videos that are on YouTube, they're absolutely beast. And it's even getting to the point that I'm even considering replacing this MacBook Pro from 2018 with a 2023 M2 MacBook Air. It's incredible to say this now, uh, this year, because in 2018, you wouldn't, that would be a downgrade, going from a MacBook Pro to a MacBook Air, especially at the time, if you go from a 2018 MacBook Pro to a 2019 MacBook Air, it would have been a downgrade, even if the laptop was a year older than the potentially one that you're getting. But nowadays, a MacBook Air is probably more than enough for 90% of people out there. But the decision that I will make eventually, it will probably go for a MacBook Pro, just because I like to, I like the Pro versions of things. I just like the latest and greatest tech that I can get my hands to, but also to future-proof myself for the upcoming years. So then when the M7 comes out, my M2 MacBook Pro, maybe my M3, whenever it comes out, whenever I decide to upgrade, I'm still happy with it and I can keep it for a couple more years before upgrading in the far future. And if you have a 2018 MacBook Pro, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what your experience are or have been with a 2018 MacBook Pro or with the Intel MacBook Pros. And if you're thinking of getting one, I wouldn't pay anything more than maybe 600 pounds for a MacBook Pro from that year, as long as it's in great condition. And if you have a 2018 MacBook Pro, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to upgrade. So don't feel the need to upgrade, especially when you're watching YouTube videos, everybody's has the latest and greatest. I still have a 2018 MacBook Pro and I am in no need to upgrade, but you can keep that 2018 MacBook Pro or maybe your 2017 or your 2019 or 2015. If you really take care of your tech, they do last a long time. You will see the deterioration on battery life. It will get slightly slower and it will get to the point where it's too slow to carry on but i'll probably recommend you to get to that point maybe stop before it fully breaks so you don't have to go a month without a laptop that is all for me today guys i'm luigi and i'll see you guys in the very next video see you later